So just wanted uh, to start with a story I read. I'll not call it a funny story because you know how that goes. A group of aeronautical engineering professors were invited to fly for free on a new aircraft that was just being introduced by Boeing. You know, actually, Purdue is number one in aeronautical engineering. I think some of the professors were there from Purdue as well, and Neil Armstrong probably as well. As the door was closing and the plane was about to take off, a voice over the intercom said, thank you for your confidence in taking the inaugural flight on this new aircraft. It was designed and built by all of your students over this past year. All the professors began to unbuckle their seat belts and made their way to the exit door of the plane. With the exception of one who remained calmly seated with a smile on his face. One of the professors who was standing in line to exit the plane asked him why he wasn't getting off the plane, knowing that the plane was built by some of his recent students. The professor replied, because they are our students. Another professor who was standing close by asked, so you're sure that you taught your students well enough to build this jet? The sitting professor smiled and said, no, I'm not sure, but I'm sure this plane won't fly. <laughs> we needed some humor. You know, we have faced a lot of things in the last couple of weeks, even as a church, and many have been battling uh, sickness. We are praying each one will be fine for our 23rd Christmas celebration. We are going to have, I prophetically declare, an amazing service where many are going to receive the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. Praise God. So we are going to talk briefly about Benefits of eating the Word of God. Benefits of eating the Word of God. I don't think you've heard this title ever before because during Christmas, we all are looking forward to eating goodies. I don't know, in your home, back in our home, my mom used to be really busy cooking so many goodies and we'll distribute cake and these goodies to all our neighbors and as children, we used to carry these small uh, plates of goodies to many of our neighbors. How many can relate? Yeah, we all did. But the Lord put on my heart, let's talk about eating the word of God. I think that is so critical, even during the season, as we think about celebrations and food, and it's all good. I, I love good food, and it's all good. But we should also eat the word of God, because... The word of God says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That is right in the beginning of the entire universe. Word of God is so, so important, and we need to know that. And the word of God says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. What a great opportunity, and that's why Jesus was born. Word became flesh and dwelt among us. It is powerful to think about the Lord Jesus Christ who was the Word, who is the Word, and who became flesh and dwelt among us. He dwelt among us. He is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is Emmanuel, God, with us. It is powerful to know that. And I love Jeremiah because he was a prophet who was warning the nation again and again and again. And he says, Jeremiah 15 and 16, it says, your words were found and I ate them. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. You know, it is a profound statement. If you read Jeremiah, his words were not really accepted. You know, he was continuing to receive the word of God and warning the nation. But he still says, I was fascinated by what the word says and what Jeremiah said. 
and your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. You know, how will we feel if we are sharing the word with the nation and warning the nation and nobody is responding? I can imagine how Noah felt. You know, 120 years being a preacher of righteousness and nobody responded except his family. Think about it. 120 years you preach and only eight people get saved. It's still worth it. It's still, we need to continue to do it because that is, if that is your assignment, then keep speaking the word. And Jeremiah was not discouraged. Noah was not discouraged because they knew it is their assignment. You know, you continue to do work on your assignment. Whatever God has assigned you, you just continue to do and the results will follow. But even if we don't see the results, you continue to do your assignment. And Jeremiah was one such person. You know, your words were found and I ate them. He really found the word, meaning he received from the Lord. He was in the presence of the Lord. He was spending amazing time with the Lord. He was in communion with God. He was hanging out with God, if I may say that. And he loved to do that. And he was able to hear the voice of God for the nation. And he really ate the word of God, meaning he really enjoyed it as a delicacy. You know, we might enjoy different delicacies during Christmas. But let's enjoy the delicacy in the word of God. Because there is precious promises in the word of God. There is precious revelations in the word of God. God will show us wondrous things from the word of God. Let's receive those words from the Lord and eat them and enjoy these delicacies and, and really digest these delicacies, if you will, and put it in our heart because that is going to grow our faith. I love Jeremiah. And then he says, For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. He knew who he was. You know, the, our identity in Christ is so important. It's not dependent on the circumstances. It's not dependent on the work that we are doing. It not, it's not dependent even on our ministry. It's dependent on who we are in Christ. And we just align with that as long as the Lord has given us an assignment, you continue to do it with great enthusiasm. You continue to do it with great rejoicing and joy in our hearts. Because we, we sang today about eternal life. You know, we need to be, we need to understand the big picture. You know, circumstances happen, things change, there might be challenges. The big picture is we are saved, we are secure in eternity. And we have a God that is with us even through this life, giving us the promise in the scriptures. The entire new covenant is full of promises that we have and we can claim and we can live our lives here, let's say for 120 years, and then eternity is secure. So we don't have to be concerned. We can continue to be joyful and rejoice always, even as Paul says, let's give a hand to the Lord. Psalm 19 and 8 says, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. You know, even as we read the word, even I think Sister Shobhana was praying about hungering for the word today, and I had not told her what we are, I'm going to share. You know, that's how the Lord leads. Do we really get excited about reading the word of God every day. It is, it is a delicacy that is provided for us. We have access to the word of God. So many people do not have access to the word. We have the word in so many different versions. We can really enjoy the word. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. You know, it's about our heart. Do we get excited about spending time with the Lord. He is the word. When we read the word, we are spending time with the Lord. Great peace have those who love your law 
and nothing causes them to stumble. We all want great peace, you know. How many want great peace? We all want great peace. But we need to love the word of God. We need to love to hang out with the Lord, to read the word, to meditate on the word, to understand the word, to understand the promises of God, to understand what the word is saying. And for that, we need to meditate on the word. We need to do the research. You know, that's when we can unearth some amazing jewels, some amazing stones, some amazing revelations from the scripture. Great peace have those who love the law and nothing causes them to stumble. You know, the word of God will keep us strong. The word of God, even as we... Uh, as we meditate on the word and put the word not in our mind but in our heart, in the spirit man, our faith will grow and nothing will cause us to stumble. Whatever the circumstance, we'll be able to stand strong and speak to the storm. Whatever the circumstance, we'll be able to face it. We won't get deterred. We won't cover. We won't be people who'll hide. But we'll go, go forth boldly and declare and decree and win against the enemy. You know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy might form weapons against us, but when we know the word of God, we can say to the enemy, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we declare it and decree it and believe that it is going to not prosper. You know, that's how we live our lives. You know, Leonard Ravenhill says this, he really, when he writes a quote, he really gets to the point very quickly. And he says this, Entertainment is the devil's substitute for joy. The more joy you have in the Lord, the less entertainment you need. I like it. The more joy you have in the Lord, the less entertainment you need. When, when you read Leonard Ravenhill's books, it will convict our hearts. That is how he writes. Very, very laser focused on the work of God and on revival. And there are several books he has written. You all should read Leonard Ravenhill's books. He's amazing. In John 6 and 51, Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he'll live forever. We eat the word of God. We continue to rejoice and enjoy the delicacy of the word of God. And we can really enjoy the fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Even as we read the word and write down the Rema word. And it can really be the lamp unto our feet and light unto our path on a daily basis. That's how the Lord speaks. The reason he wants us to Commune with him is so that he can guide us. He can teach us. He can direct our paths. 2 Timothy 3 and 15 says, The holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. That's why we share the word of God in these Christmas parties and in the outreaches and wherever we go. Be ready to share the word in season and out of season. Because people are going to come and ask you the reason for your joy. Even though circumstances don't look that good. How come you are so joyful? They are going to ask you, be ready to share the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they will also understand. You know, word of God is spiritual food. Even as we enjoy the delicacies of this world and there is nothing wrong in that. It's, it's good to enjoy. God has given us all things to enjoy. You know, we should enjoy. God wants us to enjoy our lives and enjoy the journey of life. Enjoy our families and children. Enjoy the friendships and the fellowship at church. And we should have, we, we should be able to smile at the storm. We should be able to declare at the storm that's not going to prosper and, and say, be still and be, be at peace. The storm is going to be removed. And enjoy that journey together with other believers, if you will. 
Psalm 78 and 1 says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Incline your ears, meaning really inclining our ear to listen. When you are having a conversation and, and you, you show that you are listening, it's so important. You know, even as Mother Teresa has said, you know, when you meet someone, treat them as they are the most important person on earth. They might be a janitor, you know. Treat everyone with respect and you will be meeting many dignitaries and maybe at that time you listen carefully, but listen, everyone, listen to everyone with respect because everyone brings in, uh, brings in their own purpose. You know, God looks at everyone with having specific purpose and listen carefully, not only to people around you, but listen to what the Lord has to say. You know, the Lord will convict us for, of certain things and he will shape our character. He will shape how we live our lives. He continues to refine us. The word of God says he is our refiner. He's a refiner's fire. You know, he will mold us and make us and remove the impurities like, he ref like, like silver is refined, if you will, or gold is refined, if you will. Job 23 and 12 says, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I like that. Job understood the delicacy in the word of God. I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth. Do we think about the word of God like a treasure? Do we think about the word of God like gold and silver and these amazing uh, stones that we were even talking about. You know, Job understood that more than my necessary food, meaning he was possibly even fasting and spending time in reading the word. I remember even Jonathan Edwards, uh, the, uh, the revivalist in 1730s, he spent around eight hours every day with the word of God. And we will get there. I know we have busy lives. But the, we are talking about the hunger for the word. And the enthusiasm for the word. And understanding the value of the word. And do we really understand it is a delicacy that we need to long for. And we need to, we need to spend time with the Lord. You know, in 1 Kings 19... 7 through 8, talks about, and the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him. This is Elijah. And said, arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. You know, Elijah was a mighty man of God. And when he prayed, the, the rains came. When he prayed, the rain stopped. You know, he brought fire on Mount Carmel, we know. And after all these accomplishments, he was really discouraged. And it can happen to anyone. And that's why the consistency of reading the word. You know, word is life. It will really give you joy and rejoicing as we read the word. It will give you great peace. And that's where you want to live. And that's where the Lord wants us to continue to spend time in the presence of the Lord. I really don't know what happened to Elijah, but... He had a moment of discouragement and he even wanted to die. But then the angel of the Lord spoke to him. You know, the Lord knew there is a mighty assignment for Elijah. He had a major assignment and his assignment was not done yet. So that's why the angel of the Lord came back to him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. You know, God will even provide physical food. It's amazing. And God did for Elijah. You know, ravens can bring food for you. Angel of the Lord can bring food for you. Never even be concerned about the fundamentals of life. It's given in the new covenant. And we saw that in the previous series. Just relax. God has provision already guaranteed for the people in the kingdom. You know, he'll send the angel of the Lord and say, arise and eat. The journey is too great for you. And then it says, so he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. 
you know, Elijah was fed by the angel of the Lord. And I don't know what he ate. I think it was a cake. The, uh, the, uh, the word of God mentions it. And he was able to be strong for 40 days and 40 nights. You know, that is amazing thing that happened. And then he goes to the mountain of God to Horeb. And remember, even Moses went to the mountain of God. And there was still an assignment for Elijah. He was not done. And God was not going to let him go. You know, even though a discouragement can creep in uh, sometime, but we need to get back quickly. That means we have not spent enough time with the Lord. You know, when we are hanging out with the Lord, discouragement will not come. I can guarantee you that. Because the word of God is life. It gives joy, gives peace. It gives rejoicing in our heart. That's how it works. And he went in that strength for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was given an assignment. He had an amazing assignment, a national assignment, an assignment that impacts the nation. First Kings 19 and 16, and the Lord was telling Elijah, and you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. His assignment was not done yet, but he had to spend time with the Lord, 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, he was praying and fasting. The Lord had already provided for him the food so that he can be strong for 40 days and 40 nights. But there is always time spent with the Lord before an assignment is given. Absolutely always. And you can see that in the scriptures throughout. We can see that with Moses. We can see that with Isaiah. We can see that with many men of God. There is time spent with the Lord before an assignment is given. You know, God is waiting for us to pursue His presence, to, to want to fast and pray, to spend time in His presence, and our assignments will be clearly given by the Lord. And that's exactly what the Lord did with Elijah. 1 Kings 17, 15, and 16. This is the widow of Zarephath. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. You know, first of all, Elijah obeyed the word that he heard from the angel of the Lord. You know, God can speak to us and he's expecting us to obey. And, and when does he speak to us? When we really are hungering after the word and pursuing the word and treating it as a delicacy, then he's going to speak to you. And you continue, it's a process. You continue to spend time and he can speak to you through the angel of the Lord. He can speak to you through the scriptures. He can speak to you through a prophet and so many other ways. But that's when you catch the assignment from the Lord. And here in 1 Kings 17, the widow of Zarephath, 15 and 16. So she went away and did, did according to the word of Elijah. What did she do? She did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he, that means her son and her household, ate for many days. You, you know the story of they didn't have much. And Elijah comes and says, first, God is sending Elijah to the widow of Zarephath. He must be wondering, what will the widow have? And when he sees her, he says, bring me some water. He's just testing the, testing the waters, if you will. Bring me some water. And as she's going, he says, bring me some bread. And then immediately she says, he says, bring me a cake. He knows she only has flour, and oil, a little oil. I don't know how to make cake with that, Sam. Maybe you can help. <laughs> I think for making a cake, we need some sugar. But I don't know how she baked the cake, but she did. You know, she wanted to obey the man of God. And she, and she was willing, she was thinking, I'm going to prepare something and for me and my son and die. But the Amazing part here is, it doesn't say she and her son ate for many days. It says she and her household ate for many days. You know, God provided supernaturally. And the 
the flower, the, the, the bin of flour and the jar of oil never went dry for many, many days until the famine was gone. You know, there is guaranteed provision for the people in the kingdom. And that's what she experienced. And she was willing to obey the word of the prophet because God had sent the prophet and she obeyed the word and she got the miracle where she and her household ate for many days is what the word of God says. In 1 Kings 17 and 12 it says, So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. That's where she started. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. You know, they had come to the end of the rope, if you will. They didn't have any hope. They said, it's all over now. We cannot survive beyond this. But God can change a situation like that and give them provision for many, many days. Give them great hope. And not only just uh, the widow and the son, but also the entire household. I don't know how many were in the household. And that is very interesting because God, God will provide not only for you, but for your household. Let's give a hand to the Lord. You know, our job, our job is to obey the voice of the Lord, to obey the prophet. If the prophet is speaking to you, if the angel of the Lord is speaking to you, if the Lord is speaking to you, even though it might look beyond what you could do, still obey, and God will bring it to pass. Even though it, you might say, I don't think I can do it. That means it is from God because then you know you are not doing it in our own strength, but you are trusting God to enable us to do the assignment, if you will. It's like Psalm 1. We talk about when the psalmist says, uh, but his delight is in the law of the law. You know, do we delight in the scriptures? Do we get excited that I'm going to read the scriptures today? And what is the Lord going to speak to me? And in his law, he meditates day and night. And that's when the blessing is there. You know, there are conditional blessings in the scriptures. We need to understand the conditions. You know, we need to meditate on the word day and night. Even in the middle of the night, sometimes the Lord will remind us of some scriptures. Keep declaring it. You know, because, and sometimes God will show you a dream. And the Lord does that with me. Uh, some a, a dream of danger and I know the next day I have to fast and pray and and you'll never experience that danger because God will show you that you need to fast and pray so that the enemy's plans will be totally destroyed. You know, God will speak to us and warn us, uh, show us what is coming and and that happens only when we continue to meditate and all of us are growing in that and I need to grow in that. I'm not talking from a position of somebody who has arrived. I'm learning and I'm growing. I want to do more. The word of God in Psalm 1 and 3 says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You know, we need to be like a tree. If you want to be like a tree, everyone wants to have that kind of experience that brings forth its fruit in its season. We want to bear fruit and we must do more of meditating on the word whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. We want everything we do to prosper, but we also need to meet the condition of meditating on the word day and night. John 15 and 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. You know, his word needs to abide in us. And pretty much the Lord is saying, If you will not hear my word, I will not hear your word. You know, we need to hear his word. He's literally saying that. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and shall be done for you. You know, our prayer is our words to God. And when we read his word, it is his word to us. And we need to abide in him. And if we abide in him, then we can ask what we desire. And our prayers will be answered without a doubt. 
and a few more things i want to share in terms of what the word does for us and it the word delivers say with me the word delivers the word delivers in john psalm 119 and 160 it says the entirety of your word is truth and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever and in john 8 and 32 it says and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free you know the only the truth can set us free and even if you see the current world what's going on with the woke agenda and and the reason the woke agenda is taking off we were watching a podcast yesterday a charlie kirk was uh, mentioning some amazing things he says why the woke agenda is taking off is because there is no concept of truth they have they have said truth can be different my truth is different than your truth it cannot be that's why the woke agenda is taking off but if we ground everyone to the word of god wiki then we will be fine because then we can always say but the word says this you cannot have the woke agenda which is really going berserk in our nation and we will pray for that and of course hebrews 4 and 12 talks about the word of god living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword you know the sword of the spirit we need to use ephesians 6 talks about it that it is our uh, aggressive weapon that's the only one the offensive weapon that we have is the word of god and even jesus used the word of god to defeat the enemy and we need to do that we need to have access to the word of god it's the sword of the spirit the word used there it's like a small dagger it's not a big sword it's a small dagger for a close fight with the enemy you know the enemy will come and accuse and at that time we need to have that dagger to fight with the enemy and that's why paul uses the wrestling concept uh, you know it's interesting if we have to wrestle not against humans but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age we need to understand spiritual warfare so that we can defeat the enemy we need the armor of god we need especially the sword of the spirit to defeat the enemy that's the only offensive weapon we have hana and you, i know you know that you know we need to use the offensive weapon that we have and that the lord has given us that's why it's important for us to continue to meditate on the word continue to and god will give us the specific word that we need to fight the enemy on that day the word to lead us and guide us as to what we need to do matthew 4 and 4 says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god this is how jesus fought the enemy you know enemy also knows the word it's interesting but we need to be better we need to know the word and especially in specific situations if you're facing a specific situation my recommendation is meditate on that do a topical study on that go to the concordance go to the scriptures go to different websites that give you different concordances and things like that study it look at different versions of the bible i like the amplified classic and jenny you use that as well and and it really gives you insight and they have studied and that way you can do a short circuit i guess you don't have to fully dive but use the amplified classic version it's amazing but if you do your own study it's even more amazing because you'll get to see the meaning of the words and you can then have greater faith if you will once you understand it you know that's why the word it says the word of god when we hear the word it grows our faith romans 10 17 but really it is about understanding what the word is saying that's first of all in our mind and then take that as we meditate on the word it will actually go to our heart it will go into the spirit man that's what grows our faith because faith is in the spirit man not in our mind our mind might say hey this might not be possible but still the spirit man will say i know it is possible you know our faith is in the spirit man thank you lord the word gives wisdom and i'll try to wrap it up quickly here um psalm 119 and 130 the entrance of your words gives light it gives understanding to the simple 
we need understanding and wisdom to tackle the challenges we face. You know, the word of God will enlighten what we need to do. It gives light. It throws light on certain circumstances. It throws light on what we need to do. It gives us understanding. We might not have thought through that, but the word will guide and give, gives light on things that you are facing. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. We need wisdom. We need the understanding of the God of infinite understanding. And we can go back to his word and get that. The word increases our faith. So much we need faith with all that is happening in the nation. We see the nation being destroyed on a daily basis. But people who are going to continue to pray and intercede will be fine. The word of God is very clear on that. You know, people like Nehemiah who are concerned about the nation, who are weeping and mourning and fasting and praying and who also wanted to act on that vision and, and make a difference, you know, those are the people who will be fine. They'll keep fighting. And we need to be people like that. Be like Nehemiah. That's what the Lord has been putting on my heart. I've been talking to a couple of leaders about where the nation is and the Lord has been constantly, and both of us, the Lord has been constantly putting on my heart about Nehemiah and how he approached the problem that the nation was facing. And he got a lot of favor. I think that place is a good place to be. The word is a lamp to our feet and light to our path. Psalm 119, 105. Direct my steps with your word and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Psalm 119 and 133. You know, our steps, we want God to guide our steps. We don't want to take decisions on our own. We, want, we don't want to lean on our own understanding. You know, we, we all analyze things and that's all good because he has given us wisdom, but trusting in the Lord for the decision, inquiring of the law like David inquired. You know, we need to get into that. We, we, we sometimes know we should do, but when the situation comes, are we inquiring of the Lord? And I'm challenging myself as well. You know, we have to inquire of the Lord in decisions, and even small and big decisions, if you will. So to summarize, really, it's about eating the word of God. Even as Jeremiah was willing to do that, he ate the word of God, and he declared the word of God. Basically, he ate it, digested it, meditated on it, and then he went around the nation declaring the prophetic word that he had received from the Lord, and it fell on deaf ears. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Like Noah preached for 120 years and fell on deaf ears. But we need to do what our assignment is. You know, even Jonah, I was talking to a friend of mine, and very interesting conversation about Jonah, you know, and, uh, and Nineveh, and how Jonah was reluctant to go, and we know the story, and uh, so we were talking about even a reluctant prophet with a king can bring revival, you know, a reluctant prophet with a king can bring revival. Can we give a hand to the Lord, you know, thank God for friends like this, where we can uh, share our heart and we were having a very intense conversation. Uh, this is Justin. And, uh, and, and he made the statement. And we were talking about revivals. We were talking about the siege in Jerusalem by Sennacherib. And I was watching uh, an archaeology video and so many other things. And so we were exchanging some links and having a conversation on revival. And then he said, I'm reading Jonah as we speak. And he said, even a reluctant prophet with the king can bring revival. Let's all stand up. God is good to us. You know, enjoy and rejoice in the presence of the Lord. And let's enjoy the word of God this season. Uh, you know, it's all about Jesus. And of course, enjoy the delicacies. And I'll be happy to visit you to enjoy the delicacies with you. <laughs> I'm just joking there. Well, God is good. Let's do the decree. And then we'll go and uh, wrap it up here. Wonderful. 
Okay, good. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word brings joy and rejoicing in our heart. I'll enjoy it like a delicacy. I will not depart from the commandment of his lips. As I obey his commandment, I'll overcome the hurdles and challenges the enemy throws at me. The word delivers, the word directs, the word heals, the word gives wisdom. And the hearing of the word increases my faith. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. And thank you for Jeremiah. What an amazing man of God who had the word like fire in his bones. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this prophet, the weeping prophet, who said, oh, that my head were waters my eyes a fountain of tears. Thank you for the burden for the nation, for Jeremiah, Lord, and how he ate the word of God and he spoke it to the nation. Thank you, Lord. Lord, raise up Jeremiah's in our midst and help us to enjoy the word like a delicacy. Lord Jesus, thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. God is asking me to ask a question. Does anyone want to just tell the Lord that I will enjoy the word like a delicacy? I will raise my hand first. If you want to tell the Lord, I will enjoy the word like a delicacy. Thank you for the hands raised. Bless your people, Lord. Bless us, Lord. I also want to enjoy the word like a delicacy. And like Jeremiah, we want to eat the word of God. Digest it, meditate on it, uh, live it, be doer of the word. Help us to do that, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the sword of the spirit. The dagger, a two-edged dagger, two-edged sword that will defeat the enemy as an offensive weapon. Thank you, Lord. Teach us to wrestle with the enemy and defeat the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Those who are watching online, we are talking about meditating on the word. But if you do not know, Jesus, who is the word, who came and dwelt with us, then that it is meaningless. You can read the book, the Bible just as a book, but that's not going to do you good unless you have the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ you are not going to be part of the kingdom. You cannot claim the promises. You can probably understand what the Bible says, but like many other scholars, but that's not going to do you good. But if there is a tug in your heart, that means the Lord is asking you to be part of this kingdom of God and acknowledge the God of the Bible and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And if that is you, maybe you're watching it now or watching uh, the video later and I'm going to pray and you can agree to that prayer and you will be a new creation. Heavenly Father, I want to meditate on the word but even more so I want to receive the word of God in my heart. I want to receive Jesus Christ as my personal savior. If you agreed with that prayer, you are a new creation be part of a Bible-based church, a Bible-preaching church. We are in San Jose, close to the airport, 
and be part of the blessing church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful morning and afternoon. Uh, Lord, I pray for uh, healing for many who, who are under the weather. I rebuke the works of the enemy against the blessing in Jesus' mighty name. We declare and decree healing, uh, Lord, for everyone who is under the weather. And they'll be back next Saturday with great strength, uh, Lord. We thank you and praise you. Do a mighty work and help us to rejoice and enjoy the word like a delicacy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Praise God.